Hey, how's it going? My name's Josh from PTStartupSecrets.com and in today's video, I want to discuss who your ideal client is at a commercial gym. For example, a pure gym or the gym group or any, any other gym that's similar. So you must understand that one of the benefits of working is a com in a commercial gym is that through the gym's marketing efforts, and through their responsibility to get loads of members in the door to function a profitable business, you're gonna be in front of thousands of members, paying members at the gym. And once you understand who these members are and what they want, that's when you can really put yourself in a position to make a lot of money as a self-employed personal trainer running your, running your fitness business out of one of these locations, out of one of these gyms. Now, if your gym is anything like mine, you should have thousands of members in that gym. And you know, you know there's members, there's lots of members in that gym. If you've ever been there during a peak time, which you should have as a personal trainer, because you know how busy these gyms can get. Let's say Monday morning, sorry, let's say Monday evening or Tuesday evening at 6 p.m., 7 p.m. after work. You know how busy these gyms can get. And that's a really good thing. So if you are wanting to get your chest session in on a Monday evening, okay, maybe that's not great. But if you're looking at a business perspective and the amount of opportunities you have during a peak time, then you should be, you should rejoice and be overjoyed and happy at the opportunities you have and all those leads that want, that need help essentially. They might not want it, but they need it. A big mistake I hear when I'm having these conversations, when I'm speaking with you guys, what I'm speaking with you is that you're, you're waiting for people to want help, want your help in particular, and that's never gonna happen. Out of 43 clients I had before lockdown, I'd say only seven wanted my help, they reached out to me. The rest I had to go to them. And it's all about educating, educating members on why just having a gym membership is not enough. And why paying 20, 30 pound a month is not enough to get results and teach them about nutrition, teach them about training properly with the right consistency, intensity, doing the right exercises. And obviously you're gonna encounter the same objections of the classes are free, I can do classes, I can do this and that, I can use all the equipment. And that's gonna be your biggest hurdle as a as a trainer in the gym, to educate people that the classes aren't even enough and educate them on the benefits of using, of doing real free weights that push themselves and having the real, the real one-to-one -one guidance to keep pushing themselves so they're not doing reps for a minute to music and that they're training properly, training how you train. A little tip, a really good example is when I'm sitting across from, from a member is I tell them that none of the trainers are using or doing classes. That's how you know. The real experts are training themselves in the gym. They're doing squats, deadlifts, heavy weights, using machines. They're not doing body pump and doing to the music to get in shape. They're not doing their own LBT in the studio. These people are training hard and that's why they look how they do because they're, they're doing the real work that counts. And, and you just need to think about the general population in the gym. It pays, in most business, it doesn't pay to be a generalist, but in a pure gym, in a commercial gym, it definitely pays to be a generalist. You must understand the people's motivations for joining the pure gym or a gym group or anything, or any commercial gym like that, or any low cost gym. They join in because it's cheap and they can use all the equipment. There's no contract, it's flexible most of the time. For some people, it might be a great location. It might be the closest gym to their home or the closest gym to their workplace. But for a lot of people, they will go past other gyms and travel the extra distance because it's cheaper and easier. and has everything they need. Why should they pay more? They have free classes. And you'll find specialists will go out of their way to go to a specialist gym. 
So let's say bodybuilders, you'll find some bodybuilders in Pure Gym, but you'll find a lot more at a specialist bodybuilding gym, like a hardcore gym. Let's say a Muscle Works is a popular one or any kind of popular hardcore gym because that's that fits their particular needs. Or for example, people who love CrossFit. Okay, you might have a couple of people at a pure gym, but chances are they're gonna to go to a specialist gym for that. They're gonna to go to a CrossFit gym. They might go to a Reebok gym. You might find boxers at a pure gym, but chances are you're gonna find them at a special boxing gym, if that makes sense. So for you to have a specialism, oh, I only do CrossFit, oh, I only train athletes at a pure gym is it's really ridiculous thinking because the amount of those members you're going to find are going to be very rare. The only way that could potentially work is if you do your own marketing, you have your own setup, you put your own money into building your profile and expect them to come and sign up to a pure gym to train with you. That can work. But if you want to make the most of all that, all the millions that your gym is pumping into advertising to get those free leads in front of you, then you need to understand what they're thinking and, and just ride the pure ride the marketing of the gym. So just ride the gym's marketing. If we start a pure gym, what's their slogan? It's everyone welcome or something similar like that. Everyone's welcome or everybody, everybody welcome or everybody's everybody's gym. I probably messed up all of those. <laughs> it's probably none of those, but basically it's about everybody welcome, basically. That's, that's what their model is. That's what their motto is. And the gym group, their one is, is so can I, or something similar to that. So their thing is making the gym inclusive for everybody. It's not about, I'm sure the history, the history of the gym was people who had lots of money. It was their exclusive health club. They go swimming, they play a bit of tennis, they go to the spa, go to the sauna. And it was a real luxury experience for only people who could afford paying 50, 60, 70, even 100 pounds a month for their fitness. Whereas Pure Gym, the gym group, they've opened it up where the person next door, people with no money, people who literally wouldn't have been able to afford a gym membership before, before can, can afford one. I mean, there are gyms across the country where it's 10 pounds a month to join a gym. That is unbelievable. When I started training, you couldn't get a gym membership for less than 50 pound. And as someone who was 16 or 17, that wasn't feasible for me at the time before I got my first job. And as these gyms, so these low cost gyms are targeting the general population, what does the general population want? They don't care about improving their, their, their strength in their, in their lower body, or they don't care necessarily about running faster or jumping higher or doing the perfect squats or executing the perfect form of of a deadlift or but they don't care about performance chances are most people want to feel better about themselves they want to lose weight they want to lose fat they want to tone up and that's for men as well if you're trying to and and they're the people that need the most help as well if your thing is about i help skinny guys to build muscle and get huge and you want to target young guys that's going to be a lot harder because you've got to think how many of these young guys have money for to hire a personal trainer as well. And how many guys are not comfortable, comfortable watching a YouTube video, watching their heroes and, and training like that. You'll find most, most guys are comfortable doing free weights, machines. And don't get me wrong. I mean, I've have, I have guys I train with as well. So definitely don't think that you can't help them. But the easiest money is going to be generally older people who want to lose weight, more mature people, guys and girls, especially women. So I use the example of Mrs. Jones, Joanne or Sally, who's aged between 27, 28 and 48, who wants to lose weight, lose fat, tone up wants to drop a couple dress sizes, feel better about herself. Now for me, that is my ideal client all day long because they're coming to a pure gym. They like doing classes, they enjoy Zumba, 
They enjoy doing legs, bumps and thumbs. And that's if they're confident enough to do that. A lot of Sally, Mrs. Jones, she's might be even scared to do a class. She's barely ever used a treadmill before. She's not sure how this even works. She's scared and she needs, she needs my help. And that's my attitude in the gym. So yeah, that's it basically. Just if your thing is about helping people achieve better performance, run faster, jump higher, be stronger. You want them to, you want people that only want to build lots of muscle, go into bodybuilding, follow your journey that got you into fitness. It's a big trap. Like literally, I don't think I've trained one person that has the same motivation for me to get into training. My motivation was to build muscle, feel better about myself by being more attractive to women. Okay, maybe some people have had that, but none that have openly shared that with me. So for me, if my goal was to only train skinny guys who want to get more girls, then I'd have no clients and it would be stupid. And that's one thing I came into the industry and it took me a while to get out of this habit, literally for about 15, about a year and a half. I thought that was, that was who my client, my ideal client was. And it got to a stage, I actually had a period where I refused to train anyone apart from those people in the gym, which was business suicide. So don't make that mistake. If you're working in a commercial low cost gym, this is your ideal client. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Let me know if you've got any comments and I'll catch you on the next video.